So you can kind of see that there. And almost, want to, and almost in a sense, after this story arc, you want to see more about this character. You want to see if this character, this egg boss, will, um, you know, overcome this corruption and go back to being what was left of Nikki. You, you want to see that happen. So, uh, that basically Phage to me is an intriguing character. Um, and I think we will see, just like LED, I think we will see a lot more of this character down the line. And I think it's going to be at a point where Phage will probably, in story, be freed of the corruption that's corrupted her with the virus and go back to being what's left of Nikki. That's my assumption. I'm assuming that's going to happen. Um, overall, for the story, though, I thought it was good. Um, you know, I, I like how you got more detailed backstory on the characters and how they came to be. I like how, um, like I mentioned earlier, I like how they kind of made the origin of how Nicole got her Link's body, got her physical body, but, you know, be similar to the original version, but not so much, but a little different, if you will. So I like that. <clears throat> I did like that. I like certain moments in the story, like with Sally at the end of 73. She's basically, at the end of 73, Sally's basically telling LED, look, I know you don't really like Nicole that much. I know maybe in a sense you resent her for basically accomplishing something that maybe you wanted to accomplish for your daughter. But she is a, my friend. She is a person that just like all the other people that my family and I are sworn to protect, she is one of them. She is a real person, she is flesh and blood, and she is worth fighting for. I like how Sally is, is very determined in that. She's basically telling LED, and I'm sure through the, in, in a sense, in kind of a break the fourth wall kind of, de kind of deal, she's telling the reader that no matter what you think of Nicole, she's a real character. She's the real deal. She's real, she's flesh and blood. So I liked that moment. I really did. Uh, so, and, and again, it just shows what a lot of people thought Sally was lacking was, and desperately needing has been given, and that is that character development. Um, so I really like that. And there are some other moments, too. Like, this is the first, as a matter of fact, this is the first story. This is the first story where Sally takes off the vest. She unzips her vest, takes it off, covers a camera with it, and all she has on is her tank top. So it's the first time we've seen that, and it's the first time she takes off one of her ring blades. And he gives it to the doctor so he could use it as a backup weapon. So he can use it as a backup weapon. But then, of course, people point out that when she goes to virtual reality, she's back wearing the same outfit she did before. And that's because when you go into reality, apparently, from what I've seen in science fiction movies, you either arrive in virtual reality with what you've had on before, with what you've always had on, which was the, which in Sally's case is the vest and the extra ring blade, or in the other ring blade, I should say, or it's whatever your imagination can constitute. And that's another thing I did like about, about this from what people have said about 74, that in virtual reality, and again, like I said, this is obvious if anybody's seen these kind of stories before, or seen movies and stories with a similar um, backdrop, that in virtual reality, you know, the only limitation is your imagination. The only limitation is your imagination. In other words, whatever you think of in virtual reality becomes real, or can happen. So I do like that, I do like that idea, I do like that little uh, concept they threw in there, so that if we ever do go, so, so that if Ian or Leah Baker ever have the characters go back into the virtual reality, you know, and you know, Sally's one of those characters, at least she'll have the knowledge to pass on to the others that whatever you think of will become reality. So, I do like that little concept there. As far as Nicole's super form goes, 
This to me, her overclocked Nicole form, this to me uh, tells me in a sense that this is the first of many super forms that the non-game characters and maybe some game characters that have never gotten a super form will be getting. This kind of tells me that characters like Sally, Bunny, Rotor, Antoine, and even Amy in Big and Cream down the line in some shape or fashion will probably get a super form of their own. I, they will get a super form of their own. We just don't know where and when those, that's going to happen. But I do see that occurring. And to me, this is the first step in that direction. And if that is the case, I can only imagine when, when uh, Ian Flynn or Leo Baker, or whoever writes the story, decides or plots out the story and then writes it, decides when and where that's going to take place. So, I, I do, I do like, like I said, I do like the concept of the fact that it seems that even non-video game characters are going to get super forms in this continuity, in this new timeline. So, I do like that. I really did. And, of course, there were some little references to games, like the little vine swing that was thrown in there from... There was a reference to Sonic and Knuckles or Sonic 3, so that was good. Uh, overall, like I said, um, in the end, overall, from what I've read and from what I'm going off, from what people have said about 74, the final part, um, I have to say Spark of Life was a very well, a story, very well done story arc. A big difference, a big contrast of difference between it and the current champion story arc. The champion story arc is more slapstick, basically like what the comic used to be at the very beginning, back in the early uh, 90s, if you will, back in the late 92, early 93. You know, it used to be more slapstick than anything. So, you know, you talk about a big contrast in, in, in difference here. This is it. This is it. Um, so, yeah. And apparently this story takes place before uh, 272, but seemingly after Champions. Yeah. That, that, that's the continuity thing I'm getting here. The Champions takes place before Spark of Life. That's what it looks like to me. So, because of the, because of the fact that <clears throat> this issue, in a sense, leads us into 272 of the main comic. And 272 hasn't even come out yet. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of a lead into that. It's sort of a lead into that. And, um... And I kind of like that. I kind of like that because it kind of tells you, in a sense, that like I said, Champions continuity-wise takes place before Spark of Life. But again, overall, uh, I do like, I do like it. I really do. I, I like the little. I like the fact that the showing that the Dark Gaia energy, that when it comes nightfall, that if you're around that smoke or whatever it is, that the dark Gaia energy will influence your mind, influence your thought process. I do like that. I do like that. And I, and I, I liked the fact that Sally caught on to that, saying, oh my gosh, you know, if we stay out here, we're going to be at each other's throats even more so. We might even get into fisticuffs with each other if we don't get back inside. Because the dark Gaia energy was, as night was growing, and I think in, what was it, 73? Yeah, it was issue 73 that as the night got darker, the influence was going to be even stronger if they didn't get back inside. So, like I said, um, overall, overall, Spark of Life is definitely worth the read. And if you haven't read it yet, I recommend downloading it. You can probably go to archiecomics.com um, and download it. 
You could go to Comicology and download it. Um, you can even, and of course you got to pay a price on both of those, but you can also go to Tales, uh, what is it, Tales-Kickass.net, I should say, Tales-Kickass.net or Tales-Kickass.net. Go there, and if you're a member, log in, and if you're not, sign up. And then scroll down to the comic section and you should be able to find it there in the Sonic Universe portion of it. But again, overall, I thought it was very well done. And I recommend checking it out. And if you can't check it out now, and it come, when it comes to being a graphic novel, and eventually will be a graphic novel, I suggest picking that up as well so you can get the whole story right then and there in the palm of your hands. So... Oh, again, overall, I thought the Spark of Life arc, going off of what I've read already and from what people have said about the final part, I thought it was pretty good. And uh, that's really all I'm going to say. Again, like I mentioned, when I do get 74, I will do a review on it. I will. So, that's about it, folks. Let me know what you guys think down below, and I'll talk to you all later.